Uh, Jim is uh, the other person. Yeah, I'm recording this. I want to get the different people. You're not having any vegetables? Where are your vegetables? Yeah, I am. But I can I can take that out. <laughs> Welcome to the London Rotary Club. Um, does somebody have a Rotary Minute today? I, I was uh, caught unaware that I was going to be acting president today. Anybody know who the Rotary Minute was today? Nobody, okay. <laughs> I, I know who it was. Pardon? I know who it was. Who was it? It's me. Oh, oh. Well, would you like to do the Rotary Minute? Call? Oh, sure. <laughs> he just needed to be asked. I just needed to be asked. I'd like to do the rotary five minutes. You know how I do it. The one minute is not really my style, as you know. Well, this is a uh, sort of special rotary minute to um, raise the level of consciousness to the board members and participants who've been at some of the recent meetings on uh, special proposals. Um, so, today I had the Rotary Minute and so I said, what should I, you know, try to find out about? Um, so I looked up on, the, on uh, let me see, uh, on the web about the object of Rotary. And I found that pretty interesting in the sense that the object of Rotary is to encourage and foster the ideal of service as a basis of worthy enterprise. It goes on to say that the statement then lists four areas by which this ideal of service is fostered uh, through the development of acquaintance, the promotion of high ethical standards, which we're going to have some more um, in light Manan later today, through service in one's personal business and community life, and the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace. Now, this object of Rotary has been around since 1951 in this mode. But the first object of Rotary was out in 1906, and that included the promotion of business interests, promotion of good fellowship, and the advancement of the best interests of the community. In 1910, there were five objectives. 1915, there were six. 1918, they went back to four. Four, year late, four years later, they had again grown up to six. So, you know, the, the, uh, back there in the beginning, I guess there was a lot of innovation and creativity going on with uh, the object of Rotary and they were trying to figure out what they needed to do. So what is this? object uh, sort of really, you know, what might it really mean? The commentator that I read said this ideal is an attitude of being thoughtful and helpful in all of one's endeavors. Um, what I had trouble getting to was this concept of encouragement and fostering of the ideal of service. And how does that actually relate to actually doing anything? And um, I think that's a really legitimate question to which uh, Rotarians uh, should address their uh, concerns. Because it seems to me that there is a huge divide between what is sort of uh, a, uh, an ideal, perhaps, without a goal. Um, however, we here now have a uh, rotary motto, which is service above self, and it explains this philosophy of um, unselfish and giving behavior. So maybe that's the link that we should take from that, but I think it's a worthy question for people to contemplate 
because it's a uh, there's a bit of a gap there, perhaps. Two minutes now. Is there a volume control on this? Anybody, anybody know about it? Does this seem loud? No, we, we can hear it back here now. Um, I wanted to say a couple of words. The uh, district conference was held at Loon Mountain this past weekend. It was a gorgeous weekend. Um, we had a uh, uh, dinner on the Lafayette uh, Cafe Railroad. That was wonderful. Um, and the uh, weather, Roberta's Walk, for the Grafton County Senior Citizen Center, would have had a gorgeous day. How many people did you have? 130 people. And it wasn't that much notice, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I met a few of my uh, relatives, did some relatives there. No, we didn't. They didn't know it would be there. But, um, but anyways, it was wonderful. Marilyn did a great job. And Dennis Tobin, I, Dennis Tobin, planned the whole thing. It was perfect. I mean, it went off without a hitch. Um, let's see, uh, the, on, on Sunday, um, we had an in-depth uh, review of what happened in Irene in Waterbury, Vermont, and stuff, and some of the destruction just unbelievable. But we did get the $412,000 grant um, from IRI that's going to help take care of some of those problems, hopefully. Um, do we have... Any, any questions on the district conference? It was great. I highly encourage you to attend one if you can. Oh, and uh, one other thing I want to brag, I'll pay a dollar for it, but our own Betsy and Jim, yeah. they, they, did, they were a dynamic duo on the stage on Saturday night. It was wonderful. <laughs> and Bruce, Bruce was... Uh, your microphone, I think it's, maybe it's because it's near your bed. Yeah, bad. there you go. Okay. That's fine. That's much more than... <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. oh, that's the pot calling the kettle. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Speaking of pot, wasn't that a bad choice of words? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'll get that in a second. What was I talking about? Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. Well, Bruce, Bruce and the uh, Bachelor of Ceremonies on Saturday night, uh, he, he did his spiel in impeccable uh, French and English. Um, the French contingent from Quebec was very impressed. I actually... What? They applauded. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was great. Uh, all right. That's enough about the district conference. Um, do we have any brags today? Yes, Betsy. I have $5 worth of brags. So Among the people here, here are the people who are at the convention. Jane, John, Jean, Jim. <laughs> That's Bill and Bruce. <laughs> okay? So Dennis. what the first brag is for Dennis Tobin, who chaired this conference, and they've been going for 29 months. I had no idea that it had started um, for that long. So Jean was in on the first beginning of that also, and it was absolutely wonderful. It's perfect in every way. Marilyn Bedell, the district governor, did a super job of emceeing. She is so warm and so golden friendly when she talks. She's from the heart all the time and it was just, just emotional, the whole thing. So Bruce, um, the DG in waiting for the song at Rotary's Got Talent, he and the three others, Lori and uh, Sunny Hall and Steve Date, Dates got up and they had a wonderful quartet and they sang la 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 la. <laughs> so I'm in a Garfunkel's boxer. Yes. Boxer. And it was great, it was great. And then also I wanted to brag for him for the, doing the part in French. Um, I want to brag about my debut. It was the first time I'd ever been on stage, and the first got I just got the banjo a little while ago. We learned two songs in a heck of a hurry, and it was lots of fun. Now I never want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a little oh, problem no, getting her off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Betsy. Okay. And I don't know. I I just can't encourage you enough. The 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 energy. Yeah, from other people. You five bucks is almost up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now go to a conference. Yes, Bruce. I have. Oh, and Dan. Yes. Yeah, Dan. You see that, that John is, Yager that is skipped out. He has a brag. He was going to brag today. His grandson is the son of his son, Alan. 
uh, attends a private school down in New Jersey and was just awarded the faculty Scholar Award, which is the highest academic award that you can get. The kid's in ninth grade. I think he'll be president of the United States. He's a really well-rounded and brilliant kid. But John will pay the dollar for that. <laughs> the, the other uh, brilliant kid that I want to brag about is my son Asher, who many of you know, uh, has now finished his studies at NYU Wagner Graduate School. He got a Master's of Public Administration. That was awarded last Thursday. Lori and I went down to the Beacon Theater yes. in New York on Broadway. They choose different places to be in New York, places that have history invested within there. Uh, really good about it. And the, uh, the, important, the other important thing was that he and his team, this is the team that went to Cameroon to investigate uh, attitudes about malaria and how to get it to more, uh, more effective treatment and netting especially, you know. And uh, Ron's <laughs> giving me the hook. And uh, he, his team won what's called the, uh, the award for their capstone project. So they were the best project of all the master's degrees there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to supplement the talent show part of it, that um, the boxer and Paul Simon are my absolute favorite. The boxer's my favorite song. We talked about the singing, but I was really impressed with the guitar work. Yes. Was, that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Gene. I want to brag for my daughter, who has been uh, offered and has accepted to go for her master's and PhD with the University of Michigan. Wow. She'll start an online program in the fall. It'll be four years. She'll be a nurse practitioner practicing in heart failure. I hope we'll never need to see her, but it'll be good. And we just learned on Tuesday that she's receiving a scholarship from Dartmouth, the James Varnum Award, next week wow. towards her money. And Jim and Robert has part to do with her strong work ethics. She was employed at Three Tomatoes for about seven years. Wow. Uh, her other only job since nursing. Uh, <laughs> this will be the last break, by the way. Paul, oh, thank you. <clears throat> so I tried to brag a couple weeks ago, and I was cut off, so I appreciate it now. <laughs> so do we. Um, yes. I'm going, uh, I'm getting, it's a happy dollar. I'm getting ready to go next week for a whole week of fishing. Up at the Rangeley Lakes area. In Maine. What's, what's new? <laughs> Getting my mind right with wearing this shirt around. <laughs> I, I'm uh, happy to introduce Roberta Barr that you know. She's going to introduce our speakers today. Now, the question is going to be if I make that same sound. <laughs> No, not so far? It's okay? Good. Um, I'm really pleased to have been the chair of the Ethics Committee this last year. Um, this is the second annual Ethics Award presentation by the Rotary Club of Lebanon. And the club um, has a process for this that goes on for quite a while. We receive nominations for individuals and organizations. We have a committee. Sue Ellen was on the committee. Paul Tierney was on the committee. Dennis Tobin. And then the club votes as a body to confirm the recipients of the awards. The criteria include a clear commitment to the community, really going above and beyond what you do in business, not just doing what you do, but really going above and beyond to serve the community. Um, exemplif exemplifying the values of the Rotary Club of Lebanon, those are compassion, respect, fellowship, service, and embodying Rotary's four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build, build goodwill and better friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And then basic to all of this is integrity and honesty. So um, the people that were re um, recommended, we had a, quite a few nominations, so it really is a, a great honor. Um, we're really also chosen for considering your vocation as another opportunity to serve. So all really terrific, wonderful things. So I'm going to first present the 2012 Individual Ethics Award from the Rotary Club of Lebanon to the owners of Three Tomatoes Trattoria, Robert Myers and Jim Ryman. And 
just to uh, talk a little bit about why why you were presented this award, the, the nominators um, cited you for your support for nonprofits in the community, your commitment to local food and farmers, your commitment to your employees, and I just heard you say it at lunch that some of your employees have been with you for 20 years. That's pretty amazing in the restaurant business. And your hard work over the years to establish and sustain a real anchor business in downtown Lebanon. And I've asked Robert and Jim to say a few words, so they're going to talk for a little while, then we'll present the next award. Well, thank you very much. I'm um, certainly very honored to receive this award, and um, I am uh, certainly a proud, successful business owner in this community for uh, for over 20 years now, and uh, it just has been an amazing run of fun. Uh, and great people. Um, you know, back in 1990, when we, when we started Three Tomatoes, you know, we looked closely at this community, and um, our vision for a trattoria certainly is, a, you know, a gathering place for people to, who uh, can break a little bread, drink a little wine, carry on conversation, and uh, just have fun uh, with friends, family, uh, and uh, certainly visitors. So. I believe, you know, certainly over the years, you know, we've certainly accomplished that vision and continue to, to uh, express that vision uh, moving on into the future. And um, again, as a successful business, we are, we are uh, very fortunate enough to uh, take some of that profitability and, and give it back to the community. And um, that really comes from our heart. Uh, business is business, but um, it's the community that really makes us what we are. Uh, I want to thank not only this group but the community as well for their wonderful support over the years and uh, certainly make me and I certainly speak for Jim as well feel great about where we are and what we look forward to in the future. Thank you very much. I as well would like to thank uh, all the Rotarians for this honor and award and um, for all the great work that you do in the community. Um, it, it certainly makes us proud. I, um, I asked Ron how long I should talk. He said uh, five minutes and I sort of came up with something that I thought was between three and seven so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with that and see if it works. Um, and if I go over, do I have to pay anything? Yeah. <laughs> Free lunch. Free lunch. <laughs> okay. Well, um, just a, a little background. Um, I've known Robert since uh, 1973, and he was in the building trade. I came to Woodstock, Vermont, in 73 to start the Prince and the Pauper. That was my entry to the restaurant business. And um, my partner then was Mark Malowski and Patty, and we went on to do Jesse's, and I later went on to do uh, another restaurant in Woodstock and joined Robert in 1990 to start um, then Sweet Tomatoes, now Three Tomatoes. And um, the thing that I wanted to focus on um, apropos of this award was what part do the business owners play in um, instilling in the people that work for them a sense of ethics and um, the thing that occurred to me is that a lot of people who are attracted to the restaurant business are um, uh, very interested in sort of the creative aspects of restaurant touring it's a uh, as a sort of a way of getting you out in, in the public and socializing and that all seems fun as sort of a theatrical nature and I think as owners we, we were attracted to the business for the same reason um, but the thing that is really key that is so hard to convey to a lot of people who work for us is the idea of making money the profit, <laughs> profitability aspect of it. And I've often thought maybe the best thing that we could have done over the years would be to put a big sign over the door as you come in, without profitability there is no business, and without any business 
there's no paycheck. <laughs> so, you know, you get into the, the whole realm of, um, with your new hires and even those people who have been with you for a while and the managers as well, how do you convey um, to these people the importance of profitability and making it truly, uh, in, in the case of the restaurant business, you know, it's got to be as much business as it does restaurant. And sort of therein lies the rub because um, it, it is oftentimes um, difficult to manage people's behavior. But I think um, what we have tried to do um, is be very sensitive to the needs of our uh, the people that work there and um, and in turn ask them to be sensitive to our needs in terms of uh, running a well-organized and efficient um, operation. So where does ethics uh, come to play? So if we are ethical in dealing with our staff and it runs the gamut from you know being advisors, counselors, in many cases getting involved in family affairs, um, getting close to people, getting to really know who they are, um, listening to their problems, and um, if it's appropriate, you know, make the kind of suggestions that will help them in their lives. Um, we have been uh, bankers over the years. Uh, we do a lot of interest-free loans when people are in a pinch. And it goes a long way in cementing the relationship between us and the people who are needy at that particular time. And I think what happens is, is it comes back to, to uh, help us when, when we need their help. So um, it, it's really gratifying today to be recognized for that. I don't think that Robert and I think of it as a conscious effort of, of coming today every uh, coming to work every day and showing our employees how to uh, imitate ethical behavior. But I think if you do it over a long term, a long period of time, um, you gain the respect and the loyalty um, and the commitment and the work ethic um, that really makes for a successful business. And I think that they also see what we do in terms of um, supporting the community is also something that they need to be aware of. Um, maybe not as business owners, but as things that they can do in their lives to be part of the community, be active, and, um, and be a good citizen. In any case, um, it is really an honor for us to, to receive this award, and um, we will continue to uh, do what we can to take that message uh, to our employees, not only here, but in the other restaurants that we have. And um, we will proudly display our, our award today. Thank you again very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I'm pleased to present the 2012 Organization Ethics Award from the Rotary Club of Lebanon to the Valley News, represented by our member, Rich Wallace, and he brought with him publisher Mark Travis and general manager Dan McClory. We um, awarded this ethics award to the, um, to the Valley News for several reasons that were cited and were affirmed by the club. The Valley News was cited for excellence and fairness of content, the high quality of coverage, even when it's compared to newspapers in much larger cities, the balance of the letters to the editor, the editorial page in general, um, space that's provided for nonprofit news, calendar events, and even some space for national organizations' public service announcements. And we've, we felt that a newspaper, a print newspaper, provides content and coverage that helps strengthen community. We think the Valley News does that. So I'm looking forward to hearing from Mark and we have a frame certificate for you.
thank you very much, Roberta and um, Rotarians. We appreciate that very much, especially those very kind words. Um, Jim and Robert, you are tough acts to follow as well, so I sort of wish we'd gone first. Um, uh, it, it's, it's great to be back. It's been a couple of years since I've, I had the opportunity to address this Rotary, and I had forgotten in that time the extent to which your meetings are built around song. So you're lucky that I hadn't remembered that, because I had attempted to set my remarks to music uh, today but only if I could have persuaded Rich to deliver them for me. Um, to receive a reward, an award like this um, from a, a club like yours is, is uh, very meaningful. Um, I, I've never been to a Rotary and not left feeling better. Uh, and listening to, to, to Jim, I'm, I know that I'm going to leave today feeling better as well. Um, I suppose I owe you a dollar because I do want to briefly brag a bit about the paper. Um, um, really by way of telling you a bit about it, uh, in case you don't know about our background. We are family owned, um, we're part of a small group of community newspapers. Um, two family members were longtime residents of Lyme who recently retired to Boston <coughs> Point South. Um, another family member is a teacher in South Royalton. Um, and we've been around for quite a while. On June 9th we're going to celebrate our 60th birthday. Um, we think of ourselves as being 60 years young, and the fact is we are still growing. Um, the number of home delivery subscribers we serve, this is where I fork over the dollar, uh, is, is actually up over the past five years, especially on Sundays. Um, advertising revenue is, 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 uh, was, took a beating during the recession, but it's climbing again. And I think one thing we all should take, a find, I find heartening, and I hope you all will too, is that we're seeing this in particular in our help wanted advertising. You know, which is a real indicator of, of the recovering strength in the area. Um, it began last fall and it's really continued every month um, so far this year. We're really, uh, we're really uh, intent on keeping our print newspaper strong because evidence like this, we think, suggests that it's still serving readers and advertisers well. Um, but we're about to push vigorously in a new direction. Um, later this year we'll be introducing a, what we think is an exciting new website. Um, and. Um, sort of embracing the internet after after many years of holding it at arm's length. I, I think we've succeeded as a business for, for really basic reasons, and reasons aren't not unlike the ones that Jim and Robert spoke of. We're a local paper, a community newspaper, and we take a small town view. You know, in doing business and, and in reporting stories, we try to treat others the way we would like to be treated ourselves. Um, in terms of relations with advertisers, that means things like sticking with our rate card. We don't cut a special deal with a particular advertiser without making that same opportunity available to others as well. Um, in dealing with news sources and newsmakers, um, we, we aim to be straightforward uh, and we hold ourselves accountable to them and to our readers. Um, the decisions we make, especially on the news side, aren't always popular. But when we make tough decisions, we try to do so carefully and thoughtfully and you know, with the community's interests in mind. Um, that's in part because all of us who work here are part of this community. Um, by way of example, as you know, it's been a very tough year at Lebanon High School um, with the, uh, the death of a student last fall and a teacher this spring. And these, just, these aren't just stories to us. Um, Dan, um, the editor of the paper, Jeff Good, and myself all have children at Lebanon High. Um, who were touched directly by, by these events. So, you know, we've won some big awards over the years. Um, this year alone, a couple for our coverage of Irene. Um, and they, they come from others in the news business, and so it's gratifying to be recognized by your peers. But we are, first and foremost, a local business. And, you know, our commitment and our interest is in serving this community. Um, so, in, in many respects, the recognition you've given us today means a good deal more than these, these uh, big, big awards. Um, thank you again. <laughs> I'll stop now. It's, I don't know if I could have pulled it off if this was a song. Um, uh, and if you have questions, um, I'm glad to answer them. Otherwise, I'll take my seat again. Thank you so much. Great comments, and I, I guess that um, would you be open to some questions, Ron? What? Well, uh, not everybody knows the story. Uh, this is going to be on CATV in a couple of weeks. Uh, could somebody explain the 
change from three to, uh, sweet tomatoes to three tomatoes. So not everybody knows that, including some people in the room. What happened? Um, we, we received a cease and desist notification from the owner of the trademark, right. also called Sweet Tomatoes, a yeah. chain of restaurants based out of San Diego. Yeah. And they gave us 30 days. Oh. So we went to see a lawyer, and the lawyer said, it is what it is. Um, if you don't do this or don't respond to them and, and uh, broker some better kind of deal, um, you will uh, there, there will be penalties imposed the, the, the next day. So um, it, to make a long story short, after getting uh, legal information saying that we were basically uh, we had no recourse, one of the lawyers said the best thing you could do is to call the owner of sweet tomatoes in San Diego. Oh. And I remember very well finally getting through to him because his secretary said, we will not take a call without identifying who you are and what your business is. And I said, well, my business is sweet tomatoes. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, Michael, who was his first name, picked up the phone and I told him the story. And uh, he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, how much time do you need? I said, do you mean to make the name changes, et cetera? And I said, well, this is my, this is a great moment of truth. I said, how about five years? Oh. He said, no, that won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they gave us two years. Two years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's great. So uh, there's a little, there's the moral of the story is, and I hope there are no lawyers in the room, but <laughs> <laughs> you can save yourself some expense sometimes going right yeah. to the source. <laughs> It worked for us. Yeah. Right. So the issue now is with the tagline, three tomatoes, how sweet it is. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a question for the newspaper. Okay. But I also just wanted to comment on what Jim said. Uh, uh, we have a great lawyer that I have some very good friends of who told the story about the old beef eater uh, store and uh, restaurant in, in Hanover. Oh. How do you remember that was? 50 years ago, about. But at any rate, they were sued by the Beef Eater Organization in England. And when they got a hold of them, they made a deal. They said, listen, we will not make any gin if you do not make any hamburger. How to solve a problem. Uh, speaking of the value, it was great, great paper that we have locally but we have trouble getting downstate news. And when we see what's happening downstate in Concord these days, yeah. how can you help us to bring some of the interest and power that exists in the Upper Valley into that situation in Concord? <laughs> Just the good news. How can we tell you more about what's going on downstate? Or not? Tell them. Um, we, we actually were fortunate to have uh, one of our sister papers is in Concord Modern. So we have access to their stories and, and run a fair number of them about the activities of the state house. Um, and we are about to, uh, for the first time, we're about to switch to a new computer system. And for the first time, all of the newspapers of the company will be sharing the same system. Um, we, we are all little islands, uh, basically, that exist now. So sharing is difficult. This will facilitate. Um, sharing content among the newspapers uh, and may well lead to more coverage uh, out of the state house. There's not much we can do beyond provide that coverage and and, and, um, and comment on it editorially and provide space for others to comment on it. Um, one of the issues that we face in, in covering New Hampshire, where the other papers in our group located in New Hampshire and Western Massachusetts, is half of our readers are in Vermont. And so we need to be mindful of balancing our space and providing, you know, uh, uh, equivalent coverage to to uh, space uh, full states, so that you know, that's a balancing act that that, uh, that does you know, oh, yeah. the news, I suppose, and but it would be the expense in some cases for the monitors. Do we have uh, reporters in both the for the Valley News in both state houses? No, and um, neither. We have a political editor named John Gray who sure. is, is uh, very well connected uh, in people in both states and, and reports on activities in both states. We don't have a dedicated reporter in either state house. 
we have access to the monitor reporters, of course, and have, we do have a sharing relationship with the Rutland Herald um, and the Vermont AP Bureau uh, by its content, which is a fairly vigorous bureau. Um, that those are the end of the stream of content we have access to. We've talked about, we also have built an information <coughs> arranging, a story sharing arrangement among other New Hampshire newspapers, which is very unusual. It's been very successful. It's probably 20 years old. Um, and we've talked about uh, trying to do the same with other Vermont newspapers to buttress our Vermont coverage as well. We just haven't. It takes work to set something like that. Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. I'll have our speakers today. I'm sure they'll be, they'll be willing to stay a few minutes if you have any questions. Uh, please rise with our model.